welcome back to No Water River and the Spotlight on NCTE Poets series with Lee Bennett Hopkins. Hi, Lee. Nice to have you back again. Hi, Renee. Always good to be with you. And this is our 19th episode in the series um, celebrating Marilyn Nelson, who uh, received the NCTE Poetry Award in 2017, so just recently. Um, I am actually going to just hand this over to you, Lee, to give us an overview of Marilyn's work, and then we'll catch up on the other side. So Good. take it away. Marilyn Nelson uh, was born in Cleveland, Ohio uh, in 1946. Her father, Melvin, uh, served in the Air Force. He was one of eight of the last Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, her mother was a teacher. Uh, Marilyn was brought up on military bases and lived throughout the entire country. I'll touch upon that a little later uh, because it's an important part of her childhood and her upbringing. Much of Marilyn's work is stark, yet compelling. Uh, she tackles subjects few have ever taken on. But let's begin, Renee, with the light side of Marilyn, which few people know. Uh, years ago, when I was doing a collection, Ragged Shadows, Poems of Halloween, uh, I remembered a poem that I had read, and it was really by someone unknown and someone I never heard of. The book was from The Cat Who Walked Through the Casserole, uh, a very, very slim book of very, very funny poems. Uh, in the book, she has a poem called Marianne, the Witch Girl. Uh, again, very unlike Mar anything Marilyn has ever written. It was co-written with Pamela Esteland, uh, again, two poets I had never heard of. Uh, when I picked up the book, though, I was entranced. This is like verse long before Shel Silverstein, some of it very irreverent, some very funny. Uh, and of all things, it was illustrated by several artists, including Hilary Knight of Eloise fame and Trina Sharp Hyman uh, before her career became meteoric. <laughs> so I find this poem and I had to use it. But on the cover again, the poet's name was Marilyn Wanyak. No Nelson. It was her married name. Uh, and I love this poem. I've used it with children of all ages. Marianne the Witch Girl. Marianne the Witch Girl sneaks out at night, closes the screen door, locks it up tight, faces the apple tree, turns to the house, whispers a magic spell, squeaks like a mouse. Chooses a special star, then makes two wishes, and passes arithmetic, and never does dishes. <laughs> a totally charming poem, again, which would be very unexpected, uh, considering her future career. Uh, in actuality, she changed her name back to Marilyn Nelson, and she rose to a claim with a uh, Carver, A Life in Poems, uh, published in 2001, based on the life of George Washington Carver, who was born a slave, as we know, and eventually became one of America's greatest botanists and inventors. Carver received a Newbery Award, Honor Book, and a Coretta Scott King Award, and Marilyn's career began and went wild from then on. Um, her next book, A Wreath for Emma Till, uh, appeared in 2005. Marilyn was nine years old when Emma Till was lynched in 1955. Uh, Till, as we know from history, was 14 years old and accused of whistling at a white woman uh, in Mississippi. The murder 
and the acquittal of the men tried for the crime drew worldwide attention. It's still being discussed in terms of many civil rights movements that are going on in America today. today. Uh, Marilyn talks about this book because it is one of her uh, books that she's very compassionate about. She says, I wrote this poem with my heart in my mouth and tears in my eyes, breathless with anticipation and surprise. I hope readers react to this book with shock that they haven't been so jaded by the violence and brutality we see every day in the media that they will be unable to be shocked, that they will learn about a very difficult, painful, brutal period in American history. In addition to a host of brilliant reviews, the book received the 2005 Lee Bennett Hopkins Penn State Poetry Award. Uh, again, this is a book for young adults, but certainly one that is needed to discuss racial tension in America. Uh, How I Discovered Poetry came out many years later. This was published in 2014. Uh, this is a book of 50 unrhymed sonnets, a child's thoughts, her thoughts, uh, from the ages of 4 to 14, uh, set from 1950 to 1959. It's about growing up, again, traveling throughout America with her family, because I mentioned she was a child uh, of military. Uh, often, she said, she was the first black child at any school she attended. Experiences, of course, that had a profound impact on her point of view as an artist, as a writer. Uh, I'm gonna read just a sampling of such child thoughts which appear in this book. Uh, it's from the sonnet called Attic Window, Kittery Point, Maine, 1958. Sweet land of liberty, home of the free, the melting pot, the American dream, the Tooth Fairy, Adam and Eve, the Virgin Birth. The more time I spend in the library, the less sure I am about everything. Did the Indians invite the pilgrims to their Thanksgiving feast? If so, I bet the pilgrims went home with the leftovers. Rather profound and always giving us something to think about. Uh, as is all her work, my Seneca Village, another YA collection, uh, appeared just a year later. She has become quite prolific. Uh, this book received the 2014 uh, Lee Bennett Hopkins Penn State University Poetry Award. Uh, it's a fascinating discovery uh, because Seneca Village is an account of a community of African-American homeowners on the upper side of Manhattan. And through eminent domain, the site was taken to create the now world famous landmark, Central Park. Uh, her groundbreaking work in this book was compared to uh, Thornton Wilder's Our Town and to Edgar Lee Masters' Spoon River Anthology. Uh, again, Marilyn is quite a scholar. She spends a great deal of time on research, uh, and her books are astounding. Thank you, Lee, for that uh, overview. I find this body of work truly fascinating. Um, I have Emmett Till, but I have not yet read any of her others, and I'm certainly going to be looking up Carver immediately to begin with, to you know, begin at the beginning of her career. Um, the thing about A Wreath for Emmett Till for me was, besides being a difficult, very difficult subject matter handled with an incredible heart, was the intense craft. Uh, this, this, it's called a, 
a, a, a crown of a heroic crown of sonnets, I believe. Yes. And it's just this incredible form. So I wondered if she had given you any um, advice for writers or quotes on craft or something like that to share with our listeners. Yeah, again, as you mentioned, uh, the craft of a uh, sonnet. She does this in all of her books. Uh, she takes these forms, which are very difficult. And of course, we can't talk about the many other books she's done. She's done many other books. We're highlighting only a few. Uh, we can't do everything. Uh, but I've, I'm in touch with Mel, and as a matter of fact, uh, she's writing poems for my collections. Uh, she wrote a poem for me for my upcoming traveling the Blue Road, Poems of the Sea. And she also wrote a poem for a new collection I have coming out called I Remember. Uh, so we're in touch constantly. And I had asked, did ask her about writing per se. And she said to me, uh, writers must be readers. And I think we've heard this over and over through the, all of the tapes that we've done, that most poets will admonish that You've got to read a lot of poetry before you can begin to write it. Uh, so she started by saying that writers must be readers. I encourage lovers of poetry to read widely and to read deep poems. We should not forget that poetry speaks across ages, generations, national borders, and the veils between Americans or different inherited group memberships. I suggest we read poetry, not only written by people who look like us, but also by people who do not look like us, to share our national, racial, or ethnic backgrounds. To me, poetry offers the opportunity to see through someone else's eyes. It can op open us up to each other's experience, and it can certainly teach us empathy." Unquote. A lovely statement from a very lovely woman. And finally, Lee, we usually end with the poet's uh, quote about poetry itself. Did Marilyn leave you with any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, Renee, I just want to add, Despite the heavy, some of the heavy stuff she writes about, Marilyn is a wonderfully warm, funny, witty woman. Uh, she's a person you would just love to be in her company. Uh, so we've been back and forth last week, and I did ask her for a new definition of poetry. And I always ask, what is poetry to you? And she said this. I have always told my students that my definition of poetry is shaped language. It is a verbal construction that can take up a winding staircase to show us from the roof a panorama of neural fireworks. I believe the word itself, poetry, is an honorific, a name for the highest, finest use that can be made of human language, unquote. And to end, I think that all of us, young or old, can continue to cherish the honorific Marilyn Nelson. Thank you, Lee, for yet another excellent overview of an important poet. And for those of you watching, thanks for joining us, and we'll definitely see you for another episode of the Spotlight on NCTE Poet Series. Bye, Lee. Thank you. Bye, Renee. It's always so much fun to do these interviews. <laughs> I think we've made a really good contribution to the history of poetry in America. Thank you. And thank you. Thanks to your vast knowledge of just about everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you for the next one in a couple of years. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.